Lastly, lastly, unless I keep it too long. Fourth thing, not only is that the desire of the enemy and the design of the enemy and the deliverance that Jesus makes available through his death on the cross for our sins and his resurrection from the grave. More than that, and also with that, his prayers for those who have trusted in him. Yes. But we got to have the right disposition. Yes, sir. After deliverance comes. Amen. Y'all praying with me? Amen. I'm going to take a minute here. But verse 32 says that Jesus prayed that when, Peter, you get it together, uh -huh. don't, don't turn your nose up at other folk. All right. All right. You got to have the right attitude toward folks who ain't where you at. Yes, sir. That, that's what he said. He says, he says in verse 2, 32, it's right there in the text. He said, listen, he says, when, uh, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. Yes. And you, when once you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. All right, man. I pray for you that your faith won't fail. And you need to have the right disposition. When, when, when you do go through trials and tribulation, you need to have the right disposition. You need to know that Jesus already fixed it. All right. You don't have to worry about how you're going to get out of it. He's going to take care of you getting out of it. What you need to know is, is that you need to hold on to your faith and your trust right. in him. Are you praying with me? Yes, sir. That's the right disposition. Come. Somebody said that, well, uh, don't, don't get the attitude like some people get. That, well, if Jesus is praying for me, why don't he stop the sifting yeah. instead of praying for my faith? All right. Why don't he keep the enemy away from me All right. and keep him out of my business, yeah. keep him out of my family, yeah, keep him sir. from my finances? Why don't he stop the enemy from shaking me up, All right. tossing me around? Come on, somebody. Right. Why don't he stop him from, from, from separating me from the things that are good in my life? Well, he didn't ask for the enemy to leave you alone. Yeah, he asked that your faith, faith won't fail. Yes, sir. Because he knows that you're going to fail. Yes, sir. He knows that the enemy is going to get in your business and you're going to stumble sometimes and right. you're going to fall down sometimes. Jesus is wise enough to know that. And so he didn't pray that you won't fall because he knows you're going to fall. Right. But he prayed that when you fall, you'll maintain the right disposition yes, right. in your fallen situation because if you got the right attitude, even though you fall, you can get back up again. Right. Are y'all praying with me? Right. Yes. Yeah, and he, he prayed. He says, I want you to, I want you to keep your faith while you're going through these difficult situations. And, and, and all of us need to come to the understanding that everybody that God uses has failed all right. in their lives. All right. When God uses folks in a great and a mighty way, uh, they have already come through some failure. Yes, sir. And then if I had hours to preach, I'd give you some examples about folks like Moses who, yeah. who had a criminal record and, yes, and, and was on the run as a fugitive, but God called him to be the deliverer of his people out of Egypt. I, yes, I, I, if I had time, I, I'd talk to you about Elijah who, who really lost his faith, but God took him and turned him around and used him on my car anyway yes, to do his bidding. But you need to understand that anybody who God uses, David, the Bible said, was a man after God's own heart, but he failed with Bathsheba and killed her, her husband in order to cover up his adultery with her. But, but the Bible says that David is a man after God's own heart. Because God uses people who fail. Are y'all praying with me? I, I, I love this. If y'all just walk with me, I'll get you out of here. But it says that, the Bible says that Jesus prays for Simon and for us that our faith won't fail in the midst of our trial and temptation. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm not here because I haven't failed. I'm here because Jesus prayed for me. Amen. And the grace of God kept me when I fought and I fell and I stumbled and I couldn't get up. He picked me up again and, and, and told me to run on. Come on, somebody. Yeah, he, he, yeah but, but the right faith you can get through your failures. And the Bible tells us, really gives us in this chapter, in chapter 22, it helps us to understand why Jesus prayed for Simon's faith rather than praying that the enemy will leave him alone. Well, it, it helps us to understand.
because one of the things we learn is it's hard to keep your faith in the midst of personal failure. It's hard. It's hard to keep your faith in the midst of personal failure. The Bible tells us about Simon. Simon, uh, the Bible says that Jesus told the disciples, he said, listen, all y'all in the upper room, all you're going to desert me, you're going to leave me alone. When, when, I'm, when I'm turned over into the hands of the enemies, when I'm arrested, you all going to desert me. And, every, and, and Peter said, Lord, I don't care what the rest of these folks yes. do. I, I don't care what the rest of these jokers do. I'm going to be with you. I'm yes. never going to leave you. And the very thing he said he wouldn't do is the very thing he ended up doing. Have you ever been there before? You said, I will never do that. I, I would never do that. I see some folks do that. I, 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 I can never see myself. And then before you turn around, you were you in the same predicament yes, and you're doing the same thing they did. Yes. And you say, how in the world did I get here? How did I do that? Why did I do that? Well, the Bible tells us that's what happened to Simon. And, 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 and it's hard to keep your faith in the midst of personal failure. Y'all do know the story in that 22nd chapter. The Bible says that Jesus was arrested. All of the disciples deserted him. And the Bible says that Peter tried to get close to see what was going on in his trial. And he warmed himself on the outside with folks who were standing around the fire. And the scripture says that there was a woman there, a servant girl there, that said, hey, hey, aren't you, aren't you one of them that was roping with yes, Jesus? Sir. Aren't you one of those guys who used to hang out with Jesus? And he said, no, you got the wrong one. I'm not that guy. Uh, you don't know me, God. I'm not his, I'm not his, his servant. I'm not with Jesus. Right. And so the Bible says that she kept on looking at him. You know how folks look at you right. and stare at you when they think they know you. And she kept on looking at him. He said, no. She said, no, you you one of them that was with Jesus. You one of the ones who hung out with him. You were around him. And he said, I told you that I'm not the man that you're looking for. I'm not the man. And then finally, one of the men said, no, man, you are one of them guys. I, I saw you. I used to see you hanging out with Jesus. And the Bible says that he cussed him out. He said, I'm not him. I'm not that man. And cursed him out. And the Bible says that the cop crow. Yes, sir. He had denied Jesus three times before the night, same night he said he wasn't going to never leave him. Same night he had denied Jesus three times. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. And it's hard to keep your faith All right. in the midst of personal failure. All right. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Right. Hard to believe that Christ still loves you and that he still wants you and he wants to use you. And he wants to bless you when in the midst of personal failure. Yes, sir. But not only that, Peter tells us something else, it teaches us something else, it teaches us that it's hard to keep your faith when you think that Christ has failed you. All right. And we don't like to talk about that. All right. Because a lot of times when we go through stuff and we think that Jesus has failed us, we don't say nothing to nobody. All right. But in our hearts, we believe that he's failed us. And the Bible says that Peter went through that. The Bible says that in John, in the book of John, chapter 18, I believe, when Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, the scripture says that the, the disciples were around him and Judas kissed him. said, the man that I kissed, that's the one you need to arrest. The Bible says that he kissed Jesus and they went to arrest him and they started dealing with the disciples and Jesus said, no, I'm the man you came for. Leave them alone. Yes. And the scripture says that when they tried to take Jesus, Peter pulled out his sword, yes. cut the man's ear off. Yes, sir. Y'all remember that? Yes, sir. It's in the text. And the Bible says that Jesus, instead of, because Peter was thinking that this is it, this is it, this is the thing. But Jesus is about to break the ruckus. We, we, he about to establish this thing. He's about to kick it off. And so he pulled out his sword, thinking Jesus was going to be with that kind of business. Yes, sir. The Bible says that Jesus rebuked him. He said, put your sword away. Uh -huh. If I wanted to fight, I could fight. I don't need you. Yeah. I wish I had a witness. Yeah. He said, put that sword away. And the Bible says that he went over to the man, picked up his ear, and put it back and healed the man's body. Y'all yes, don't hear me. And I, I can imagine how Peter must have felt. Mm. Peter said, I, Lord, I was serving you. And you didn't side with me, well, but you yeah. side with the enemy. Yes, I've, been, I've been walking with you for three years. And I'm trying to protect you and your interests. 
interest and your agenda and you blessing the enemy. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? Uh, let me see if I can make it real to you. Uh, Lord, I've been serving you. I've joined the church. Uh-huh. I've been baptized. I, I go every Sunday. I bring my tithes and my offerings. All right. And on top of that, I give to the building for them. Yes, sir. And, and, and now you turn around and my cousin them, they don't give to nobody. All they do is grab. They try to take everything they can get their hands on. Yes. And they don't even study about you on Sunday. And you blessing them. I wish I had a witness in here. Yeah, I've been, I've been faithful. I've been waiting for a man. I've been waiting for a woman for you to send me somebody to be with me. And every time I turn around, my friend them, they just as loose as they want to be. Every time they see a man, they own a man. Come on, somebody. And now that she get married, and I'm still hanging out here, waiting for you to send me somebody. It's hard to keep the faith. When you say Jesus has failed you. Right. Oh, y'all may hear me in this place. You ain't never been in a situation where you were looking for God to bless you. And he went over and blessed somebody else. Right. And Jesus said, Look, I know there will be times when you don't understand what I'm doing. Yeah. And you don't understand what I'm trying to bring about. And you're going to think that I'm on the side of the enemy. But I want your faith to be sustained in yeah. those days. Yeah. Because if your faith is sustained, you know, in the end, it's going to be all right. all right. Even when you don't understand what I'm doing and you don't know what I'm doing, still trust me. Even though when you took your mama, you took my mama. Yeah. Even when you took my brother and you took my sister. Yeah. Even when you took my child and you don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. I want your faith to be sustained then. Yeah. Yeah. But if your yeah. faith stands, yeah. if your faith stands in there, if your faith when difficult times come, when it's all over, I'm going to work it out for your good. Even when you don't understand what I'm doing, just trust that I'm going to work it out for your good. When it seems like everybody else is being blessed and God has forgotten about you, Jesus said, I want you to keep the faith. I want you to hold on. I want you to hang youngster, 17 years old, in Seattle, and she was going to a party. She went to a party, true story, in Seattle. She went to a party, and when she left the party, she was driving on a road that was icy, and when she was on the road, the car came out, went out of control, and she ended up going off the road, 100 feet down into a ravine, yeah. and, and, and she was out of sight from the, from the, from the highway, and so people going by didn't know she was even down there in the car. She was broken. She was bad. She had broken ribs. She had a broken leg. She had a broken arm. And she had hit her head on the windshield and had a concussion. And, and, and she was dead. And, and, and nobody knew what happened to her. Her parents were waiting for her to come home. And they waited and waited. Still, she didn't show up. 17 years old. And so, and so what happened was they sent out a search party. And they got all of the responders that they could. And they walked through the trail and drove through the road where she was. But she was so far down and so far off the road that they couldn't even find her. They got church members and all kinds of folks to go out and walk through that area to see if they could find a trace or a clue of what happened to her. And here she was the second day. She's still dead. Third day. Fourth day. Fifth day. Sixth day. And on the sixth day, they called off the search. Y'all gonna hear me in a minute. And they said, well, we don't know what happened. And the parents were, uh, was, was, were under the impression that they would never find out what happened to their daughter. But, but uh, there was one woman in the church who went home on the sixth day, night, and she began to dream. And in her dream, uh, I came to her where the girl was yes, in the dream. So she got up from the dream and got her daughter. She said, come on, we're going over back to where uh, the road is to try to find this girl. So I have a premonition that she's in a certain place. And they went down 100 feet off of the road and down into the 
ravine. Yeah. And there she was. Now somebody say, yeah. that was just a coincidence. Yeah. But I don't believe in no coincidence like that. Yeah. I believe that that's a revelation yeah. and deliverance yeah. so that somebody could come alongside that young girl. Yeah. And they found that when the responders came, they began to dig her out and to cut her out of the car. Yeah. The car was so badly uh, uh, mangled that they had to cut her out. And so she was still alive after eight days. Y'all were hit her. And so the responder said, man, I've never seen anything like this. That somebody could last for eight days without water. Right. Said because the body shuts down completely after eight days without water. Y'all don't hear me in here. But then, but then the doctors got a hold to her and they examined her and found the blood clot. And they said, wow, I can't believe that she had a blood clot for eight days and it didn't spread and stop her heart. Y'all don't hear me. He, and, and, and so he said, the doctors figured it out. What happened was because the girl was dehydrated and because for eight days she didn't have any water, that stopped the blood clot from moving around. And the blood clot uh, that she had for eight days kept her still so she didn't have to move. And that stopped Thank <laughs> you.